9 billion people by 2050, and I've seen anywhere from 50 to 70 percent increase in production for wheat to meet that demand. Right now, we're 1 percent or less from increasing yield from the genetic side. And if we take into account that we're going to have less arable land to farm and that climate change is most likely going to cause more drought and so our arable land becomes less even still, we're really going to have to push on the genetic front to increase yields. If we're going to continue what we're doing now, we're on a path to fail. And so we need to change things up and do something different. Anything that has to do with stuff that's not currently being used but can be explored, it's worth our, it's definitely worth it. So in a normal inbred program, it's really difficult to quote, build everything into that one line to release. In an ideal world, you would have a line that yields, has high yield, is resistant to every disease and every insect and all the rest, where the more traits you try to add to that list, the harder and harder it becomes to try to get that line. Where in a hybrid, you can have a line that you've selected, say, for drought tolerance, and another line that you've selected for stem rust, for instance, and you can actually combine those two together and have a product for somebody to actually have drought tolerance and stem rust resistance, where to get that in a normal line would be very difficult, or if not impossible. We're trying to reduce those production costs from the seed producer side so that the farmer can afford or make it worth it for the farmer to have that seed. By providing them with a hybrid, they can plant that and take advantage of the better water use efficiency. You hate to waste water from an irrigated standpoint.